Well, I, I do agree. I think the only thing that can stop our uh, strong economic growth is what I would call unforced errors. And I think uh, uh, the president is uh, on a path of unforced errors. Uh, substantively, I don't know of anyone who thinks tariff is, tariffs are the answer. Uh, uh, Alcoa uh, does not want tariffs on, on Canadian uh, uh, aluminum. Uh, the car companies don't want tar foreign uh, tariffs on automobiles. Uh, we know that there's 190,000 steel and aluminum jobs uh, that he's trying to protect, yet there's 6 million jobs who buy aluminum and steel, and every day in the paper they're raising their prices. So substantively, he's on the wrong path. Uh, tactically, um, maybe this is a tactic to get free and fair trade. Um, I, I, don't, I wouldn't take that tactic. Time will tell whether it's a tactic that works, but substantively, he's on the wrong path. Bill, we did hear him say that he talked to the president about this, presented his opinion. The president listened to his advisors, which he said were wrong, that there, would be that there wouldn't be retaliation or effect on consumers. Do the bankers have a voice in the Trump administration with Gary Cohn no longer there? Well, I think they do have a voice. I, but he's not just hearing this from bankers. As I said, uh, uh, the car companies have talked to him. Uh, uh, the uh, aluminum companies, the ones he's trying to protect, have talked to him. Uh, he, he either doesn't listen to them or, I think, again, I think he may think this is the tactic to take. And if you look at his history and, and the art of the deal and so on, it's not unusual for him to yeah. take a tactic like this. Uh, so, uh, again, it wouldn't be my way of doing it. And I think he has to understand politics. No leader of another country wants to look like he's a loser. Trump always okay, has on. to look like he's a winner. And that's yeah. the problem. I want to bring uh, Bill Cohen into this conversation as well. Thanks, Get sir. your thoughts on that, Bill. Well, look, I mean, uh, I mean, yes, Wall Street will have a voice in this administration. Uh, uh, Steve Mnuchin uh, was a former Goldman banker, a private equity guy, hedge fund guy. Uh, Larry Kudlow, our, our own, uh, you know, was a former banker. Uh, uh, economist uh, at, a, at a Wall Street bank. So th th they are obviously going to listen to the Jamie Diamonds of the world. Uh, that doesn't mean they're going to follow his advice, and it's quite clear from what Jamie said that they're not going to follow, uh, they're not following his tactical advice. Uh, you know, you just don't know whether these unusual tactics that the president is employing will result in the outcome that's best for the American people. You know, so far along the way, it doesn't look particularly like the right tactic to be using. You don't want to have all this talk of retaliation. Jamie Dimes is absolutely right. If you, you know, the quid pro quo is just going to ratchet up. And Dick is absolutely right. Uh, no uh, political leader wants to look like uh, they're losing face uh, in, in a battle with the president of the United States. So, uh, you know, I don't think Gary Cohn's a absence from the scene uh, reduces the access that uh, Wall Street and bankers have. But that doesn't mean that uh, Donald Trump is going to listen to them. Yeah, uh, Bill, you know, uh, Jim Cramer raised the possibility or at least the risk of criticizing the president because you open yourself up to potentially a negative tweet or even more. Is that a real threat, do you think, uh, when you s at least speak out? And it was very mild criticism from Jamie Dimon, but I guess it was criticism nonetheless. Yeah, it was, it was believe me, I thought he was being very diplomatic, uh, frankly. Uh, he's been, uh, used much harsher language in the past. Look, you know, J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, David, is a juggernaut right now. I mean, their first two quarters profit has been $17 billion net income. They are on track to make $34, $35 billion of net income. Last year, they made record profits at like $25, 26000000000 billion. So, I mean, honestly, it's great to be Jamie Dimon. He looked great. He, he sounded great. He sounded enthusiastic. I mean, I, you can't ask for a better a series of, uh, uh, of events going on related to the J.P. Morgan Chase business. So why take on Donald Trump? Why get yourself in the crosshairs of his tweet storm or anything else that he might want to do? Because he's a very high beta guy, as we know. Why, why not just sort of lay low and play the game? And, and your stock price is through the roof. Uh, his profits are through the roof. I mean, God bless him. He's doing everything he could possibly do right at the moment.